I've been on a short break from video making recently while busy with some real life stuff, but I felt moved to add my voice to the outpouring of support we've seen in the community over the past few days for Paul Sawyer, following the very sad news of his ill health. Straight away I should say his family have created a GoFundMe page to support him, following his diagnosis with stage 4 brain cancer, while Warlord Games have produced a charity miniature in his likeness, with all proceeds from sales from the figure going to the Brain Tumor Charity. I've linked both in the description. Paul's tenure as editor of White Dwarf marks, for many in the hobby, the true golden age of the magazine. In his alter ego as Fat Bloke, he brought many a smile to hobbyists across the globe and inspired countless projects, blogs, video series to date, having featured in the original incarnation of The Tale of Four Gamers. A personal favourite, which I have vivid memories of reading as a teenager, was his solo adaptation of the format, Lure of the Gods, in which he slowly built up Radchuk's forces before taking them to Adepticon. Beyond the nostalgia that such series conjure up for that period in the hobby, or indeed the prices in those days, £1.25 for a large bacon baguette, the concept itself was genius in capturing the enthusiasm of more everyday rather than heavy metal level hobbyists at the outset of a new project, while demonstrating an easily replicable format for slow grow leagues up and down the country. But beyond these famed beastmen and chaos armies, it was his dwarf collection which left the biggest impression on me. Named the Khazad Bolg Expeditionary Force, translating to Fortress Fatbelly, it's still what I envisage when I think of a dwarf army. Some shots of the collection featured in the original 6th edition army book, including longbeards, slayers, miners, a runesmith, three cannons, an organ gun, a flame cannon, a gyrocopter, and an engineer converted from the model for Craggy in the Anvil of Doom kit. This was followed by an awe-inspiring double-page spread of the army in the 2005 Dwarf Collector's Guide. The army is vastly expanded here, with 48 warriors, 40 thunderers, blocks of 20 each of rangers, longbeards, ironbreakers and miners, two gyrocopters, an anvil of doom, a couple of heroes, and an expanded artillery, now featuring two bolt throwers and a grudge thrower on top of the organ gun, flame cannon and regular cannons. The collector's guide also gave us some close-ups of a few of Paul's conversions, including a drunken gyrocopter pilot, and some of his thoughts on unifying a dwarf collection using standards. The yellow and black colour scheme certainly stands out, conjuring images of Avaland in the Empire, and yet, although bright for those staunch traditionalists, the dwarves, it somehow never seems garish on the army, perhaps because of how sparingly it appears on figures, given the amount of chainmail and plate armour worn by the average dwarf. Incidentally, the champion for his unit of miners reappears as the suggested figure for Brock Stonefist in the third War of the Beard article from White Dwarf 267. One unfortunate dwarf from Paul's army also seemed to have made its way atop a Black Orc standard for Dave Allen's army in the Tale of Four Gamers Revival from edition 300 onwards. During the process of painting up and recording the progress of my own 6th edition dwarf collection, I've tried to make a point of chronicling and drawing together wherever I can the history of these figures, and Paul's collection is, I think, another significant artefact in the history of this much beloved range. Links, once again, to both the GoFundMe and Warlord charity figure in the description. And finally, just a big thank you to Paul for making his impact on the hobby.